Hi, my name is Shri Raman, and I'm an engineering manager with the database migration team uh, at, uh, with Azure Data Team. And I really apologize for the delay in coming here. I was stuck on the bridge for a long while. There was a bit of a pileup, so I got in later than I expected. So I'm going to talk to you about migrating on-premise uh, SQL Server databases to Azure using database migration service. I don't know how much exactly. I, I pretty much lost half my time, so I'll try to run through it as fast as I can. But there's quite a lot of data available online as well as on uh, docs that can help you. So I'm going to take the time to quickly run through a couple of things. How many of you have used uh, database migration service? A few database migration assistant, a few more. SQL Server Migration Assistant, a few more. OK. So pretty much we have a set of tools that enable customers to migrate from on-premises databases, whether it's SQL, Oracle, Sybase, et cetera, to SQL Server or Azure, SQL DB, SQL MI, et cetera. So today I'm going to talk primarily focus on the database migration service. So I'm going to run through a bunch of stuff. Let me quickly show you a couple of pictures and I'll t talk to you. I'm going to skip all of this for lack of time. I'm going to skip this as well. I'm going to talk a little bit about the database migration service. So DMS, or the DMS as we call it actually, is an Azure native service which allows customers to migrate data from their own, uh, data from one database to the Azure data. So on the right, you're going to find the three interfaces which is common with native Azure services. You can use Azure Portal to talk with DMS, PowerShell, or CLI command lines. All of these gets routed to a DMS resource provider, which basically determines how it has to respond to those tasks. On the other side, we have, we have the on-prem network from where we are trying to pull the data. So DMS itself is hosted in Azure on a virtual machine at this point of time. It can be hosted on any compute. The idea is DMS reaches into your network through either a VPN gateway or uh, Express Route gateway, some side-to-side -side connectivity where it talks to your server, pulls the data, and streams it onto the Azure data, uh, Azure data services. So without further ado, I'm going to just jump into um, showing you DMS itself. So DMS actually works off of, are you able to see it? Not really. That's what I thought. Okay. Is this better? Perfect. So here, what I'm, um, in order to create DMS, what you do is basically, it's as I said, it's an Azure Native Service. So you can basically do a, a create resource. type it wrongly. Hmm. Interesting. So you can basically do a create of a database migration service. At this point, it basically gives you a bunch of options. It basically says, hey, what, is, what do you want to call the service name? What subscription do you want to create it in? What resource group? What is the location? And basically, the next one that you see is the virtual network. The virtual network basically tells you, basically gives an option for you to choose which network you want to connect it to, where, from where you have side-to-side -side connectivity. 
because DMS needs to be able to talk to your on-prem or the SQL server from where you want to pull the data. So in the interest of time, I'm going to skip out of this and go back to the database. So once you create the service, that's the blade that I showed you where you land up. So this basically is the migration service uh, entry entry point, the entry blade. So here you'll notice that I have a bunch of migration projects. And here I've selected, basically it says this is my virtual network. So if you notice, I have an express route connected from CARP to West US 2. I've named it, named it in a way that makes it sense. And then you also notice that I have a SKU, a DF business critical SKU. So DMS has two, uh, two SKUs that we offer today. One is called basic, the other one is a premium. So basic or general purpose. So basic or general purpose allows customers to move, it's free service where customers can move a large amount of data as needed, but it supports only offline migration. Basically where the migration, during the period of migration, the source server is not available for you to do any transactions. It basically remains offline. We also offer a business critical SKU where the source server can continue to be online while the migration is in progress. And what I'm going to show is one such thing. So I have a business critical four week core. So I'm going to create a new project. Okay, I'm going to give it a project name. Here you'll notice the different patterns, different source and target servers we support. Today we support migrating from SQL. Uh, we also support migrating from AWS, GCP, et cetera. We also support migration from Oracle, Postgres, MySQL, MongoDB, et cetera. So these are the various source platform that we are allow for migration from. So I'm going to, for now for this demo, I'm going to choose SQL Server. Same, if you look at when you select SQL Server as a source, it allows you to either migrate to a VM, a managed instance, or a singleton SQL DB, or an elastic pool. Um, so I'm going to pick the managed instance. I'm going to say, hey, I want to do, again, there are different types of activity that you'll come up. So basically, you can do an online data migration, which is what we're going to do now an offline data migration, which basically means the source can be off, you just want to move the data across. We also, today, as a preview, we support SSIS package migrations. For the future, we'll also be supporting login migrations and jobs migrations, etc. So I'm going to pick the online data migration. I'm going to save the migration. So it gives you a set of, they pick up the, yeah. And here I have an option to create and run activity. Okay. So when you do that, now we go through a migration wizard. So basically DMS says, give me the source information, tell me about the target, tell me which databases that you want to move. A few migration settings that allows the migration to happen and you can kick off the migration. For online data migration to manage instance, we basically use a log shipping paradigm. So we utilize the customer's existing backup maintenance plan. So we use the full backup and transaction log backups, follow the log chain and restore it in order, and bring the, once when the cutover operation happens, we basically do a recover of the DB on the target side and it can be used from that point onwards. So I'm going to select the source server. I'm going to use Windows authentication. 
I'm going to use my card credentials. So once I do this, DMS is going to basically send the request out to the worker node that I was talking about, which basically validates. Am I able to connect to the source that the user has provided? Does the username and the password work? Does it work? So it basically picks up. And once it connects to the server, it also picks up all the set of DBs that are hosted on the, on the server, so we can actually pick which DB. On the target side, we use something called application. How many of you have used Azure App IDs? Have all of you used it? Are you fairly familiar with it? The concept is DMS is going to be running unattended mode. And it cannot use a standard username password because you have two-factor authentication enabled in Azure AAD by default. So we need a way for DMS to be able to authenticate itself to the MI, to MI and storage to be able to operate with and restore the databases. So we provide it with an application ID. Think of it as a username and password for, for the DMS. So basically, we'll give an application ID and the password. And we also tell you how to create one. So basically, in case you don't know, you, we basically walk you through the process of creating an app ID. So once you do this, once you give the application ID, we basically say, OK, tell us which subscription you are managed instance with in. So I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick the subscription, the internal demo subscription. And once you do that, it basically populates the list of so I'm going to pick one of the managed instances that I have. And also ask you for the SQL Server username on the, um, on the target MI. Now I'm going to say, again, it's going to go through the authentication mechanism here. So it basically validates that it's able to connect to this, uh, connect to this MI instance using the user ID and the password that you gave it. Now you'll notice that it basically says, OK, these are the DBs that I found on your source. Which one do we want to move? So I'm going to pick just one. And once you do that, so now it asks you for a set of um, configuration parameters. Basically, it's asking us which backup network share, SMB share, can I locate the full backups and transaction log backups from. So I'm going to provide it a backup location. And again, I'll give my uh, corp credential to be able to access that one. So, and now it's asking us for a storage account where it can copy. So the way that it happens is it takes the full backup, copies it to a storage account, because managed instance cannot talk to your network share for security reasons. It talks only to a storage account. So we move 
the data from the network shared to the st blob storage and then have it restored on the back on the MI side. So again, I'm going to say pick up a storage. So it basically, again, pick up the same subscription that I had earlier. And once I pick the subscription, it's going to basically say, give me an option of So I'm going to pick this storage account. And for the purpose of this demo, I also have an additional option where I can say, instead of calling it as HR, I'm pretty sure that I haven't, I haven't dropped the DB since the last time I demoed it. So I'm going to just change the demo, change the name of the DB. Once you do this, again, it's going to validate that it's able to connect to the storage account, is able to see the full backups, at least the full backup, and then it's going to come back and give the option to review and continue. So at this point, I'm going to say run the migration. Oh, I forgot to give the name of the activity. So once you do this, now DMS takes over, and basically it's, it starts, it initializes, looks for the full backup, copies the full backup. So you can actually go in and share, take a look at this. So there you migrated one DB. So you basically say it's okay. So it basically says the full backup has been uploaded, and it noted it saw seven different log backups. It follows the chain, it uploads all of them. And then once it uploads the full backups, it basically starts restoring this one. So if I do a refresh now. You'll notice that the full backup is restoring. Once the full backup is completed, it goes through the rest of the restoring process. Once the full backup is restored, you, you'll, and it will enable the cutover option. So you can go ahead and cut over and the migration and the DB is alive on the other side. So let me just do a quick run on that. So you'll notice that it's restored a bunch of stuff. So when you say start cut over, at this point, it's going to say, hey, everything is ready for me to cut over. So I'm going to confirm. I'm going to apply. So it's basically at this point completing the database migration. So given that we didn't get too much time, I just had to run through the scenario. Otherwise, I could have shown a little bit more how a transaction is applied, it captures. So basically, when a transaction is applied, it waits for the transaction to be applied. So you can actually, the way that typically users run it is they keep taking transaction log backups every few minutes, every five, 10 minutes. So DMS is constantly monitoring that share, and eventually when it picks up that transaction log backup, it automatically uploads it. So you can keep up to date. So at some point when you do the pending log backups, you'll know how far behind or how far, how much lag the source and the target has. So again, we are running out of time. I'm going to be available out here as well as in the booth. There's a database uh, migration booth. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Really sorry for the late, um, uh, late show. Thank you very much for waiting for me.